On March 7th, a large sunspot group crested the southeastern limb into Earth's view. She came in angrily, morphing around, crackling with solar flares. But it was not until it began departing the Earth-facing side of the sun that it erupted for real, first with a million tons of plasma erupting as a filament, then the M-class solar flares did something they had failed to do during the previous days, create a flare-driven CME, solar tsunami to the north of the ejection point. The eruption nearly created a full halo, and we were immediately certain that a portion of the eruption was heading in Earth's direction. The eruptions were set to arrive late March 17th, with a density around 15 protons per cubic centimeter and a speed of about 550 kilometers per second. However, by mid-morning on the 17th, it was clear that the initial estimations didn't give these eruptions their due credit. Density estimations were low by 50%, and the solar wind speed nearly hit 700 kilometers per second, a relatively strong shock wave. Since it was a double wave, the effect was enhanced. The auroras began lighting up the sky, and the space weather watch was on. The magnetic fields began fluctuating. Some of the readings strained credulity even based on the stronger stream. Electrons in major fluctuations, and this ended up delivering the strongest magnetic disruption of the solar cycle, which is definitely not expected even based on the stronger CME, which could have been both faster and denser. We've seen that. Just as things weren't unbelievable enough, a KP8 level 4 magnetic storm occurred at Earth. The electron belts went from normal to seeing electrons peaking at lower and lower L shells coming down into Earth's upper atmosphere along with the standoff distance of the magnetopause, producing geoelectric effects and ground currents. A major plasma penetration event occurred during this storm, pouring solar plasma into Earth's atmosphere. This is just a sliver of the power outages reported today. Some of the many reports you can find online have normal explanations, but a lot are currently unexplained or system-related in a way that makes you wonder if space weather was involved. After all, this is exactly what you worry about with major solar storms. Unfortunately, much of the full effect won't be known still for a few days. Until then, we can say that, observer effect notwithstanding, this is the type of event that should increase electric problems. Even Cox was reporting widespread problems today, along with large areas of the PlayStation Network. Notice the northern location of the worst effects, which is what you expect with geomagnetic storms. The actual storm lasted half the day and is just waning back now, but reverberations could bring back more storm events, along with any coronal hole impacts which we expect in the next day or two following the departure of these coronal holes. A last note, if your initial reaction to this is, so much for that quiet sun we talked about, this event was a level 4, which should happen approximately 100 times each solar cycle. There have not been more than 5, and we're about done with solar maximum. We are 95% below our average for the cycle in level 4 storms, and 100% missing KP9 level 5 storms. Also, this CME was strong, but not this strong. This could be a symptom of that weakening magnetosphere, the number one concern on Earth right now, in my opinion. Scroll down and find some links that discuss the magnetosphere and why it is the number one concern. Eyes open. No fear. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.